Hello and welcome to the presentation for the 2023 Street Improvement Program for the City of Oakdale. This involves the streets of Hydram Avenue from 15th to 17th Street, Hydram Court, Upper 16th Street, 17th, also includes Helmo Avenue Bay, south of Helmo Avenue, and Upper 26th Street from Hydram Avenue to Helmo Avenue. My name is Brian Bachmeyer. I've been the Oakdale City Engineer since 1989. Joining me in this presentation is Todd Blank. He is a principal with Short Elliott Hendrickson, the consulting firm we use for design and construction management. The purpose of this presentation is to review the need for an annual program, describe the construction elements of a project, outline the process of a project, and also present the policies of project funding. There are four objectives of this improvement program. The first is to improve safety for the people that use the street. There is a direct correlation between pavement condition and safety for bikers, walkers, and motorists. Uh, the second objective is to control maintenance costs. As pavement gets older, it becomes brittle and the maintenance costs increase and they're increasing at an increasing rate. Uh, the maintenance costs are exceeding the amount of revenue that is collected for that purpose. Patching is very inefficient. In fact, it costs five times more per ton to patch a street than it does to pave it. The third objective is to improve the efficiency of the street lighting system. And we will do that by replacing the high pressure sodium fixtures with LED fixtures. And the fourth objective is to eliminate service barriers. Again, as the pavement gets older, it gets brittle. And in the spring of the year, uh, the pavement is at its weakest when the frost is coming out of the ground. And during that period, generally from March until May, we have to impose load restrictions, which could impact service delivery to your homes. If you're having any work done on your home, it may be difficult to get materials or equipment there to service your property. In Oakdale, typical streets are designed to last 25 years. In this particular area, the last time the streets were resurfaced was in 1996, which was 26 years ago. And so as the pavement gets older, the pavement condition deteriorates at an accelerating rate. At the same time, the maintenance costs are increasing at an increasing rate. Uh, however, we reach a point of diminishing returns at about 25 years of age, where no matter how much we invest in the street, the pavement conditions continue to deteriorate. The city of Oakdale does monitor pavement conditions throughout the community. As a city, about 12% of our mileage is rated at poor to very poor condition. In these particular neighborhoods, the ratings are borderline fair to poor. And due to the age and the type of cracking they will only fall more into the poor category over time. Street pavement is most susceptible to damage in the spring of the year from March until May when the frost is coming out of the ground. Uh, due to the pavement age and condition, it is now necessary to post this particular area at five tons per axle. This could affect service delivery to your properties. If you're having any work done, it could affect the delivery of materials and equipment to your property. The City of Oakdale does have an annual street resurfacing program. We have about 90 miles of local streets in our community and we're resurfacing three to four miles a year. So you can see that we're asking our streets to last 25 to 30 years. For 2023, the Hydrum area and also the Helmo Bay area are two of five neighborhoods that are scheduled for resurfacing. I will now turn it over to Todd Blank to talk about a typical project, what you can expect, proposed improvements, and the construction process. Next, you'll see some pictures of a recent similar project that was done. And this first picture is taken on Helmo Avenue south of 50th Street. You'll see the existing asphalt pavement has really seen its, its service life uh, you'll, you'll see the expensive, inefficient patching that public works crews have had to do by hand, which Brian referred to. Uh, there's different colors of that patching because it's had to be done year after year to keep that road in service. 
So in the next picture at that same location after the project, you'll see brand new asphalt pavement in between the curb and gutter. And that's the main goal of this project is to replace that old pavement section. There are ex some spot pieces on the existing curb and gutter that have been replaced. And uh, there is a brand new uh, city standard street light. So on the curb and gutter, we're not looking to replace every single piece that has a crack in it. We're after the more severely cracked pieces or pieces that are settled so much that they're holding water. Things that will start to affect the life of the street pavement. Uh, the street light that you see in this picture is the city's current standard for collector type streets and for commercial and industrial areas. So it's a 30 foot tall uh, aluminum pole with a decorative pendant type fixture on the top. The next picture is taken in a residential area along Holly Avenue and same type of, of street pavement that has really seen its, its life, uh, severe cracking, areas of patching that have been done by hand. That same location after the project, again, the pavement replacement with brand new asphalt pavement, some pieces of curb that have been repaired, especially around the storm sewer catch basin structures, and the city's current standard street light for residential areas. This street light is a concrete pole with a decorative acorn type fixture on the top uh, it's about 13 feet tall, and again, this is an LED light. Next are pictures of the existing project area. First on Upper 26th Street, looking east towards Helmo Avenue, and in the foreground is the relatively newer pavement that has been replaced, and then past that, the pavement that's proposed to be replaced with the project. There's some more severe cracking from curb to curb that Public Works has had to patch, and then also another patch on the right-hand side uh, to keep the pavement together. Helmo Avenue Bay, uh, a couple examples of that cul-de-sac. Uh, pretty severe cracking looking from the top back towards Helmo Avenue. This type of cracking, it's very difficult to figure out where to stop and start the patching without the rest of the street falling apart. And then an example of one of the bigger patches towards Helmo Avenue. Hydram Avenue North, further examples of pavement you know, at the end of its design life. Pretty severe cracking around the manhole on the right. Hydram Avenue Court, cul-de-sac. Uh, another example of very severe cracking. The concrete gutter in the, in the picture on the left has already been replaced once by, by city forces. And then 17th Street North. Further examples of that uh, older pavement, the cul-de-sac on the right, pretty severe cracking, and then the dead end on the left. One of the primary goals of this project is to remove and replace the old asphalt pavement. In that process, we're also looking at other things that may be improved, and one example is the raised center median on Hydram Avenue near 15th Street. It's very difficult for Public Works to properly remove the snow and ice, and so this is a chance to improve that. We are also looking at the condition of the curb and gutter on both sides of the street, and some of the more severely cracked and settled portions would be removed and replaced with the project. Before we put that new pavement down, we want to make sure that everything underground uh, meets the current standards. So there might be some repair on the fire hydrants and the uh, valves on the water main system. Public Works is currently televising the sanitary sewer and storm sewer pipes, and there may be some sealing of sanitary sewer joints and also some minor repairs or maybe the addition of a catch basin on the storm sewer system. The pipes flowing into and out of the ponds are also being reviewed, and over time the sediment accumulates there and, and trees grow up around those, those aprons, and this is a chance to clean that out and fix that so that the flow is better. The current street lights meet standards except they are the older high pressure sodium type bulbs on the top. And so those fixtures on top are proposed to be replaced with the current LED standard fixtures which are much more efficient. We are looking at the condition of the street signing and anything that is not up to standards will be replaced with the project. 
And then lastly, we are in contact with the private utility companies. So the gas, electric, phone, and cable companies. They are aware of the project schedule and they will likely take this opportunity to perform any repairs or replacements that they need to do on their system during construction. What will you expect to see during construction? So during the construction process, the, the city will hire a contractor. Um, the project will go out for bids and the city uh, is bound by law to hire the lowest responsible bidder. So we will have a prime contractor out there that has done similar type of work and uh, they will be the, the lowest bid. They will have a number of subcontractors to do some of the work. So one of the first things that will be done is the pavement will be reclaimed. So you'll see a, a big asphalt reclaiming machine uh, with diamond teeth on it and it will come and it will reclaim that existing asphalt pavement and, and turn that into gravel. That gravel can be recycled or reused on the project if necessary. After that the grading crew will come in and they will remove the top uh, three and a half inches of gravel to make room for that new asphalt pavement section. At the same time, there will be a, an, another contractor in, a concrete subcontractor, in to do the curb repairs. So the spot repairs on some of the most severely cracked or settled curb. Some of the existing curb to be replaced will be in front of driveways. In order to best match in, the contractor will need to remove a small portion and patch back in an area behind that curb on the existing driveway. In this case, the contractor will provide advance notice to the property owner so that arrangements can be made for parking while the concrete cures and, and gains strength. This usually takes approximately one week. Uh, there will be utility repairs, so there will be a pipe crew that will be hired, uh, taking care of any needs on the city's sanitary sewer, water main, and storm sewer. And then also, as we mentioned, there will be some private utility companies so sometimes the gas company comes in and, and has to replace the, their, their gas system. Or there might be some spot repairs on some of the cabinets or transformers. So there will be other crews in there doing that type of work. After all of that work is done, then the first layer of asphalt will be paved. Uh, we call that the base course. And uh, that will be paved. At that point, it will not be a gravel road anymore, but, but a, a, a paved roadway. After that pavement is installed, then the castings in the street will be adjusted to their final elevation. So the manholes and water valves will be brought up to their final, final grade. And then the boulevards can be restored. So anything that was disturbed with the street lighting or uh, anything that uh, is in back of some curb and, and gutter replacement, uh, the city will be putting in uh, new topsoil and sod in those areas. The private utilities are responsible for their own boulevard restoration. So any areas disturbed by the gas, electric phone companies, they will be doing their own topsoil and grass restoration. A lot of times they uh, use seeding for that instead of sod. After all of that is done, uh, then the final layer of asphalt is paved. And at that point, the, the project is complete. So during construction, access will be provided to all properties um, on a continuous basis. Uh, however, if there is a piece of pipe uh, right in front of a driveway that has to be replaced, or if the concrete driveway um, apron has to be replaced, uh, then, then there will be a, a time that access into the driveway will not be possible. The contractor will provide notice ahead of time and alternative arrangements can be made. Uh, mail delivery will continue throughout the project. Uh, but we do also want to hear from property owners on any events that you have planned. So if you have garage sales or graduations, open houses, um, any, any, any other events like that, you can notify us ahead of time and we'll work with the contractor to provide the best access and clean that up as much as possible before that event. The city has standard allowable working hours. So Monday through Friday, that is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
And then on Saturdays, it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Contractors don't always work Saturdays, but sometimes they need to just to stay on schedule. So no work is allowed outside of those hours unless it's an emergency. And then lastly, the city will have representatives out on site during the project. Uh, these will be resources for, for you, any issues, questions, problems that you have. And uh, they're also out there making sure that the project is built properly and correctly. We are beginning this project by sharing information sharing information with you, and then we want to hear back from you on things that you're seeing in your neighborhood, things that you may want to be addressed with this project, items such as drainage, utility service, or street lighting. We have some surveyors out on site gathering further information on the city's infrastructure and the project area. We are conducting a study to further determine the improvements and the proposed costs and funding, and that will be summarized in a feasibility report to the city council on December 13th. At that point, the council can order the public hearings. Those would be held on January 24th, 2023. There would be a one hearing to review the proposed improvements and then a second hearing to review the proposed assessments. And this is the chance for the property owners to provide testimony to the city council on the project and the improvements and the assessments. After that, if the council orders the project to go ahead, construction plans would be prepared. Those would be brought back for approval in March, and then the project could be put out for public bidding. The bids could be brought back to the council in late April, and a contractor could be hired to do this project. We would then anticipate construction starting in early May and being complete at the end of August. Thank you, Todd. I will now be talking about the city policy as it relates to project financing. The estimated cost to repave the Hydrum and Hemo Bay area is $955,315. The city will be financing 79% of that, or $751,000. The, the balance of $200,000 will be assessed to the property owners and that assessment represents the cost to remove and replace asphalt on a minimum standard street based on 2002 construction dollars. The assessment is determined by the minimum lot size requirement for the zoning district. In these neighborhoods, the minimum lot size is 80 feet, so that determines the total assessment per unit. The one exception is the Hope Church property, which is actually based on total frontage times the assessment rate. The city is held to a high standard in that the assessments cannot exceed the benefit to the property. Court cases have defined benefit to be the difference in property value before and after the improvement. Special assessments defined. It is basically a loan that is spread over a 10 year period. The interest rate is 2% above the city's rate. The interest starts accruing on October 15th of 2023. The property owner can prepay up until that date, October 15th of 2023, without interest. Partial prepayments can be made at a minimum $500 per deposit. Uh, if the property owner chooses not to prepay the assessment, it's certified to the county and collected with the property taxes over the next 10 years, with the first installment starting on May of 2024. You can pay the remaining principal at any time, and there are hardship deferrals available. Just a little bit about the hardship deferral process. There is an application that can be filed with the finance director. Generally, it requires that the property be homesteaded. It does continue to bear interest unless that's waived by the council, and it's terminated upon the sale or transfer of the property, change in the homestead status, or if the council rescinds the hardship status. Since 1992, the city has used these assessment policies and 9,443 properties have been assessed following these policies. There are a little over 10,000 parcels in the city, so for approaching 95% of the properties have been assessed under these policies. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the phone number and or email address provided here.